the recording of history as it happens. So we have examples, people like Cartier Bresson, mm. of a fantastic history, the way life was in the 30s, 40s, 50s. And we think of that as history, but when you do street photography now, you're doing exactly what you did, which is recording life as it is, as it was, at that particular moment. It's just that it's this moment rather than this moment. And with the depopulated or uh, you know, lacking in people, uh, print works. Mm -hmm. um, why? What's, what's your reason for removing people? And, and aside from the buildings, any evidence of them? Like I said, no detritus, no, no bins, no uh, hot dog carts? Or... Um, I have been very worried, and maybe not in any of these particular four cases, about buildings being destroyed, buildings of quality going. Not perhaps in the manner of ISIS, but that slowly over time we are losing quite an interesting uh, set of architecture for our streets. And one of the reasons that the uh, series new drawings reports really quite banal small buildings is because we are hardly likely now to, to preserve the likes of the big national stations, but we're losing small, weird, interesting buildings all over the town all the time. And perhaps it's my way of nailing them down. In the manner of street photography, I'm recording the buildings, but just the buildings. This is really purely about the building. So these are portraits. These are portraits of buildings, not of the way they're used, not of the people in them. Uh, so a kind of defence against the, say, although in this case they are quite grand buildings, but some of them are, are lesser, uh, more parochial, yes. and uh, being pushed aside by the things yes. that are willing to say the, yes. the ground. Uh, and you, you find a beauty in, in these smaller, more obscure buildings and want to it's save it for austerity. It is a preservation, yes. Um, but I do cheat oh, sorry, because, sorry. yes, I, I, in preserving, I actually also restore to a large extent. One of the great things about drawing something is that you can choose to put all the windows back in. And uh, you can choose to take down the stickers and posters and aerials and uh, other bits and kits that you think aren't original to it. So I can record in a way that's neither strictly present nor strictly past, but something which appeals to me, to my sense of the aesthetic. So yes, you can strip it back to, to how yes. you feel it was intended to be. So in fact, it's a hybrid station that's behind me. It was in a very shabby state, I drew it, but I didn't draw it in that shabby state. I drew it in a, a relatively pristine state. Interestingly, they're now painted it, and it looks much like what I've drawn, but that's just one of those things that happens. Fortunate. Um, What's the root of your interest in architecture as a subject slash muse, I would even say, for the yes. work? Well, oddly, I was an interior designer for um, an enormous amount of time, from 1968 through to the uh, early 2000s. <clears throat> and so my interest was in architecture, but mostly on the interior. But at the same time, I was always for pleasure drawing the outside of buildings, not in this formal, straight-on portrait manner, but doing drawings of, of buildings within the settings, uh, with trees and all sorts of things, not as a pair of back as this. Um, so architecture has been part of a career that is just it's transferred into the making of art and printmaking rather than actually making the buildings. With your, um, your career, your background, your career background being interior design and yes. now your artistic career being focused on the exteriors. Yes. Do you think there's uh, something internal within you that's a, a fight against what you spent so many years focused on the inside that's uh, well, well, I think uh, you've drawn away from the beauty of the outside? Probably. I, I think, that, in fact, you tend to fall back on what you know to a, a large extent. And this is probably as near as I get to adventure to move outside the front door. Okay. Um, could you walk us through the process uh, and practice, such as uh, printing techniques and your aesthetic choices? Yeah. Well, over time, I've, um, not greatly, but I've been an etcher, I've made monoprints, I've made liner cuts, woodcuts, uh, screen prints, and then latterly, this particular kind of uh, 
printing process that I'm using now. I don't want to talk too much about the actual process that I use at present because I don't want to give a recipe, but basically it derives again from drawing and pen and ink. Now, I've, some people say they're incredibly accurate. If you look, they're not incredibly accurate. There's a wobble to the line, and there are two reasons for that. One is I have wobbly hands. Uh, and the other is that I want to show that they are a drawing, a handmade object, rather than something that looks like it came out of an architect's office. I, I don't want it to look they are so perfect that it, it, it looks like it is um, a selling brochure job. This is a work of art. Yeah. It is the, the point of seeing the artist's hand within the work. Yeah. Yeah. But to, uh, going a little further, a little deeper, you mentioned the choice of colour earlier, yeah. whether it's recorded or not, we won't know. But, uh, <laughs> and that's, uh, uh, I think it's personal. I mean, I think it's down to my colour eye. It's down to what I perceive as comfortable and fitting and also correct, with the exception of the flaws which are lilac or purple. Yes, and the, <clears throat> and the, the lilac or purple which you have run through lots of these pieces. Yeah. And, and that was cho me, chosen as a kind of signature or motif to yes. tie the works together. It does do that. It was chosen by a happy accident. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did the first one using those colours and then continued going so that they belong to a family rather than being a one-off. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I would have had to think of a new floor colour each time and that would be my testing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, and they do still allude to the, the, the changing colour of concrete. I mean, concrete does, yes. does give off different hues in, yes. in different lights, and that there are times when you will see it as a kind of purple. Uh, maybe I did that first time. Maybe I did actually see a colour reflection or whatever, because you can get, certainly in photography terms, we talk about a colour cast, where uh, if you have a red building, it will bounce a, a reddish light onto it. It's, uh, Um, is this an ongoing series, or is this is <coughs> this station series complete now? No, nothing's ever complete. I mean, there, there are other stations which I recorded on a recent trip to Japan, for instance, which might find their way in. This was this is a bit of an experiment because I've been working on a series called New Drawings, where all of the oh, they're called New Drawings, but they are prints because I used the drawing method to make the prints. And they were all made at size A3. Um, so this is not all different to make at this sort of scale. And what it makes me realize is that I could make very much bigger prints and would quite enjoy making bigger prints. But I need to know whether they will sell before I make masses of them. And again, why stations? I have no idea. That they were a little collection. They had to be. They had to relate in my head for the show, so I wanted to make a little set, and they could have been in butcher shops or railway stations or anything else. It just happened to be in this occasion. What hung together was the railway stations. And going back to what you just mentioned, that you've now got a, a, a body of photographic work from Japan, a yes. recent trip to Japan. Um, are there pieces within this series from outside of the United Kingdom? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, not in this larger series yet, but in the, the series of new drawings, the A3 series, there are drawings from uh, Australia, uh, from the United States, where I've shown, uh, from France, Italy, Germany, Austria, many places, yeah. Portugal. Will they be um, put into sub series or will they be one large, all encompassing thing? Well, one day. I would really like to show a, a, a very large number, 200 of the, the small ones together. Um, I'm currently showing in two places at the moment um, foreign buildings in the series of new drawings, but they're all size A3. Um, one of those shows is 20 buildings from Britain and 20. Uh, buildings from outside of the so it's a total of 40. And they are separated, but they just happen to be that way. They don't have to be. They could easily be uh, categorized as 
pubs, restaurants, cafes, or they could be all sorts of other sort of denotations. For the, how, the, how do you see them as a group, as a, as a series? I, I didn't. I, I have them catalogued that way in terms of finding them within my own system, so they are uh, catalogued. But I, I'm very happy to show them next together. And uh, the exhibition you're speaking of with 20 uh, UK buildings and 20 from outside the UK, yeah. Yeah. where's that exhibition at the moment? That's in Southgate. Um, there's another one with uh, 20 foreign buildings in Bloomsbury. But the, the, the reason was for the, the split between the European, uh, sorry, the British and the, the foreign ones was that the uh, 20 British buildings had already been put up and I was asked to fill another space. So I filled another space with 20 foreign buildings as a counterpoint. Okay. And outside of this series, um, what what new are you working on? What, what are you working towards the moment? Have you uh, upcoming exhibitions? Yes. Uh, I'm talking in conversation with people about on upcoming exhibitions. But oddly, this is a period where, for the first time in, in months, I am not under as much pressure as I have been. I've got commissions that come out of the previous shows, and I have. Um, orders for prints which I must fulfill, but actually, it's the first time I've sort of dropped back from a mad rush to present a series of shows. So, I've had five shows in about the last two weeks, and so I'm looking that's, forward to a break nice. from uh, doing quite such a gallop. Um, and I think that could be very good for me because if I'm not careful, all I'm doing is stepping on the gas and providing to a demanding market. Mm -hmm. It perhaps have a little thinking time. Yes, which, you, which can feed back into your, your own practice uh, and yeah. uh, you expand on other I, ideas that you haven't had time to work with. Absolutely. Yeah. But even, for instance, when I, I talked about uh, a trip abroad, I'm a street photographer, so what did I do while I was abroad? Street photography. So it's downtime and it was fun, it was pleasure, but I'm still working. Is there uh, any street photography exhibitions or, or bodies of work? Okay. Yes, there's only one current exhibition of my photography, and that's in the Blackstock Road at the moment. The, the rest are all uh, printmaking exhibitions. Are we, uh, are we going to see a Japan exhibition? Not necessarily I mean, in Japan, but of work. I've been asked about that. that. There, there are feelers out for, for an exhibition in uh, Dublin for, for that, but we'll see. Very long way from Japan. Right? Yes, it is. Yeah. But there's quite a lot of interest in Japan and, and on these aisles. Uh, yeah, and the, the whole um, business of the Japanese and the Chinese is something that uh, inspired earlier generations, and I can see why it's absolutely fascinating. Well, there's quite a correlation between Britain and Japan, especially. They're both island nations. Yes. They both have now um, figurative monarchs, uh, they're both mm -hmm. ex empires. Yes. Yeah. And they've both been hugely influenced the world um, in industrial terms at different yes. times. And artistically. Yes. Um, but interestingly, in Europe, we tend to think in artistic terms about the uh, heritage from the Greek or Roman mm -hmm. and coming right through to modern times. And the, the first real chinks in the armour of the Greek or Roman were um, primitive and native art in the forms of people like. Picasso, and also the Japanese and, and Chinese influence, Chinois Elena and so on, which came in in the late 1700s and so on. So yeah, it, we, we have seen that before, Whistler and Water Lilies and things like that. So, um, it's not entirely new, but it was a shock for me. It was a real eye opener to see such a very different um, way of looking. And there is a tremendous use of Zen in the way that they plant and treat the natural world. A and mixture of you. And simplicity. Yeah, a mixture of great simplicity, cultivation, um, and manicuring nature, which is very odd. I mean, allowing nature to be, but not quite. Just slightly pushing yeah. her in a direction. Giving it a thing and a sharp here mm -hmm. and there. So it sounds like we, we probably will be seeing more from your Japanese show. I, I think this might be likely. I was challenged recently to see whether this technique 
of uh, printmaking could work in a non-urban setting, whether I could use it in terms of greenery, in terms of the, the great outdoors. Also, uh, that would the be, same editive technique of yeah. paring down to what you see as the... It would the be very interesting to see what came out of me applying this technique to completely non-architectural settings. Yeah, I, I myself would be very interested to see that. Yeah. Yeah. So please, please get in contact if you do, <laughs> if you do uh, move forward. Apply here, yeah. yes. <laughs> I'd certainly like to come and see some work and possibly curate a show for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, now I'd like to ask the audience if they have any questions. Does anybody want to ask Andrew Goodwin a question? <laughs>